lights, camera, action. Today we are taking the best mobile cinematic gimbal to new heights by improving it with some killing accessories. We're gonna build different setups for interview, travel, solo content creation, and I'll show you how to execute some keyword shots. First, we're gonna check how to do a crazy review shot. We place the gimbal in pan follow mode like that when we go low to the ground, the phone will not move. Just check that monster. Oh, there is an S-Bank coming. Executing very fast. Damn, we got the moment, we got it. The next shot I tried was the crane, but for some reason here it didn't look good at all. So instead of going high, I tried going low and that was a killer shot. Very powerful movie trick is to use visual tension to keep the viewers more engaged. The tension creates interest in the viewer. To achieve the visual tension is very easy. You just have to tilt the camera diagonally. The diagonals are creating uncertainty. When you're in the POV mode, it's very easy to create diagonals. Unfortunately, you can't stay consistent. That's why the Huhem i Steady M6 has a special mode. You just have to press the wheel button two times and from focus you switch to row. Now you can precisely adjust the horizon level. The advantage doing it that way, you can use all the gimbal modes without changing the angle. Now I'm in pan follow, so I can go low to the ground, high in the air, and I'm keeping my diagonal. I can switch to follow mode, where the gimbal will follow left, right, up and down, and I'm still keeping the diagonal. That system is amazing. The telephoto lens on the iPhone, it's terrible at night, the footage is unusable. But the telephoto shots are looking so amazing, especially when you have such a beautiful environment. To solve that issue, we're gonna use the telephoto lens from the Senmark. You screw it to the One X lens and it converts it to telephoto camera with real bokeh. To get the best performance from the gimbal, we have to rebalance it and to auto calibrate it again. That is what the gimbal sees. Most probably I'll have to remove that plastic bag because it looks terrible over there. Many people think of the telephoto lens as being solely for portraits, but it's actually a versatile tool that can be used for so much more. Not only does it produce stunning footage, but when combined with a gimbal it creates incredibly smooth shots. The next accessory that will dramatically improve your footage are filters. Unfortunately, here we are hitting one huge issue. There is no one brand that produces amazing lenses and amazing filters in one. So you have to buy different systems. My favorite brand for iPhone filters, it's called Freewell. They produce not only filters for mobile phones, but for drones and cameras. So they're really specialized for filters. The most popular filter out there for camera is the ND filter. When you rotate it, it's getting darker. So you're restricting light. Right here I have the iPhone without any filters and we'll be zooming through the trees to show you the difference between motion blur and no motion blur. Now let's install the filter. I'll tap two times the power button so we go in standby mode. We just have to click the filter. It's very easy to install it and now we have to rebalance the phone. When you're ready, just press the power button once. To be able to activate the motion blur, we have to take full control of the camera. Unfortunately, we don't have that option on iPhone. So we have to use a third party software. I'm using ProTake. It's mostly the same like Filmic Pro, just much cheaper. The Filmic Pro became really expensive. Here is how the filter looks in front and we can rotate it and make it darker. Let's go manual mode, go to ISO 57 and shutter speed 1 50th of a second. We're recording in 4K 24 frames per second. Pressing record and start running.
The Varabo and the Ingenero is an amazing filter. I use it all the time with my camera, but it's really uncomfortable using it with the iPhone because of two things. First, it's convenience. It takes a lot of time. You have to use a third-party application till you make all the settings. It's very uncomfortable. If you're an Android user, you're really lucky because you have Pro Video by default in the camera application. The second thing is the quality. The iPhone default camera application gives you the best quality and the best stabilization. Apple doesn't provide the same algorithms to the third-party applications. That doesn't mean we should not use filters with our iPhone. We just should use different filters. The first filter is the Glow Mist. That filter removes the artificial sharpening from the iPhone and makes the row between shadow and highlight softer. The effect is very subtle, but the image looks more cinematic. At the moment, I'm filming with the One X camera without any filter. And let's install the filter. Do you see the difference? Let's point it at the sun. So here is how it looks with the filter. And now I'll remove the filter. Do you see how it makes the highlights glow? The other two filters are amazing. They emulate anamorphic lens without compromising any quality. The first filter is called the Galactic Grid and check what it does to the sun. The cool part is that you can rotate the filter and precisely decide which direction the rays to go. The other amazing thing with those filters is that they're big and they're covering all the lenses, so I can easily switch between 0.5 and 1x lens. I think that picture will look the best with the 2x camera. The next filter is called the Color Burst. Check how many different colors you're getting with that filter. And the best part is that you can adjust it. I think that looks cool. It's amazing to have all that gear, but if you don't have the right technique, your footage will look crappy, no matter how much money you spend. The first thing, we have to move like water. We have to be fluid. Nice, slow, gentle moves. Nothing crappy, nothing sharp. Cube, cube, cube. We are not the Jedi's, we are filmmakers and we have to move slowly, like a cat hunting in the bushes. There are four gimbal shots that look good no matter what. First, we have the push shot. It's when we want to review a subject. We start wide open, we show the environment and we push towards the subject. We review our hero. The second is the pull shot. It's the opposite. We start from the subject and we pull out to show the environment. That shot is perfect for travel content creators. Then we have the different tracking shots behind the subject, in front of the subject and on the side of the subject. And fourth, we have the jeep shot, when we start low to the ground and we peak high in the air. The trick to make those moves look professional is to do long and steady shots and the transition between the different types of shot to be very smooth. You start with a nice tracking shot, you catch up the subject and after that you rotate very nice and slowly around it. And the second secret ingredient is introducing foreground. That creates a parallax effect, which means that the foreground and the background are moving with different speeds and makes the video more interesting. If there is no trees or any subject, just bring the gimbal low to the ground and the ground will become the foreground and the subject will become the background. Mm -hmm. 